What is the holy trifecta? As I said, the holy trifecta is when you intersect these three technology areas, structured authoring, source terminology management, and I use the word source very specifically here. I'm not talking about multilingual terminology management. Some of you might deal with localization where you're translating into 4, 8, 12, 16, 42, 76 languages. That's very important. But for today, we're going to be talking about managing your source terminology. Those are the words that we use when we create the content to start with. And we are going to talk about translation memory and how these three things overlap and inter intertwine and intersect. So here's the deal. Each one of these three technologies is great on its own. I mean, if you don't have any of them, you better get at least one. Which ones do you need? I don't know. Let's talk. We'll figure it out. But together, when you combine all three, the whole is equal to more than the sum of its parts. I had to practice that sentence because it's really backwards. Okay? It's really when these three things are aligned that you're going to see the biggest bang for all the bucks you're going to spend putting these technologies in. Okay? And they all work together. So let's start with structured authoring. And I want to start with a poll. Do you use structured authoring? Oh, nobody. OK. Be honest with me. If you don't really understand what I'm talking about when I say structured authoring, just like raise your pinky. You don't have to show everybody else. Oh, go, you go. You go. Good. Good. OK. So let's talk about it. because. My hunch is that between all the sessions you've been to, and if you heard Pavan speak about Watson, and he's talking about structuring, and you might have heard him talk about semantic tagging, and what the heck is this, let's make sure that we all understand what this is. Because it's critical. And you're going there. Amen. <laughs> Amen. Yeah. Exactly. OK. In the beginning, a writer created content. And he or she started on page one in the zone, right, the zone. The zone, you know, you got the caution tape across the cube walls, the lighting's just right, you cleared your desk, and wrote and wrote and wrote until he or she stopped at page 300. Could happen with a technical manual. Maybe not so much with marketing documents. But we can have some pretty big pieces of content. The point is, we started with this monolithic blob. If you saw the panel on uh, the first day on Tuesday, was it Tuesday? Tuesday? <laughs> I've lost track. It's the monolithic blob. And it really doesn't matter how many pages you have. It's a blob of content. And if it's in a PDF, I personally, you can tweet this, PDF is the graveyard of all content. It's the graveyard. Because once it's in that PDF, it ain't coming out. You're not doing anything else with that content in a PDF. We need nimble content. And from a global standpoint, and let's remember, I'm always looking at things from a global standpoint, because that's sort of where I place myself in this continuum. The way this works is that somebody writes a whole thing from beginning to end, and yeah, it gets reviewed, right? The subject matter expert sees it, whatever. You put your changes in. Then it goes to translation. Oh, by the way, you think you're done. You think, like, my content is finished now. It's done. And then translation takes over. Your content's just beginning. And they do this whole hokey pokey. They turn themselves around in country review, blah, blah, blah. And poof, it is desktop published. Which, anyone here deal with localization? OK, desktop publishing is this enormous event that costs way too much money that nobody seems to understand. Like, why am I paying three times what it costs me to translate to have a desktop published? And you have to do this, desktop publishing, whether you're making uh, HTML files for the web or you're making the fateful PDFs or it's an InDesign document, whatever it is, in every language. And then finally, your customer base gets to see it. Well, along came structured authoring. 
And what structured authoring did and does is it said, you know what, this whole idea of a monolithic blob of content, this is not working. It's not flexible. It's not nimble. I can't do anything with it once it's out there and I'm done. And instead of being able to take one brilliant chunk of content and reuse it everywhere you need it, I'm actually copying and pasting and tweaking and writing again, and now I have this additional blob. I have lots of blobs of big monolithic content. This is not effective, it's not efficient, and it's expensive. So with structured authoring, what we do is we say, you know what? We're going to separate our content into small pieces. Sometimes you might hear them called topics. It's okay to just think of them as a small piece. And when you create a small piece of content, then it's nimble. If, if I only created, let's just say I'm writing uh, a case study. And we know that there are certain sections of that case study that are all the same. Or I'm writing a certain set of uh, data sheets or whatever it is. There's certain information that's always going to be the same. Well, rather than copying and pasting it and having it live in 18 places with all the different deliverables, it lives in one place. You write that content one time. You store that content one time. And then when you create the middle piece, your information asset, what you do is you pull these different chunks of content together and systems build a map so that they know, oh, okay, this goes before this, and then this goes before this, and this goes before this, and heaven forbid someone changes the product on you, and you have these 17 different versions of this data sheet because really you have 17 models of the same thing. It, translate that into whatever industry you're in. You only have to correct it one place, once, and auto automagically all of the different information assets that you create are updated. The same goes with translation. I only translate each one of these little pieces one time. One time. Those of you who are part of that process, you should be hearing, oh, cha-ching, 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 cha-ching. The cost goes down. In addition, so far so good? Are we okay? I don't want to go too fast. Okay. So we, we're not writing big pieces of content. We're writing small chunks of content that we're going to build different, different kinds of things with. Imagine all the other kinds of assets you could create if you were able to reuse that content. Okay, it, it gets really exciting for some of us who get excited about content. Another difference is that when you work in a structured environment, you separate the words that you are writing, the text itself, from the format, from the way that content is ultimately going to look. You would have to. Otherwise, how can I take that same paragraph and put it on a website and put it in an e-learning course and put it in a data sheet and put it in the fateful PDF? Right? So let's just review it again. I've gone from a big monolithic block, however many pages it is, to small, reusable, nimble chunks of content that I can mix and match and combine any way I like, that's completely separate from how it's formatted, and now I can create all these different things. This is brilliant. This is brilliant. In the translation world, now what happens is, yes, we're still writing and we're still reviewing, but remember, once something's written and reviewed, if you're not changing it, you don't have to send it out again. I don't know about you, but as a writer, the one thing I really hate is when I say to someone, here, here's five pages, I only change six paragraphs. They're on pages four and five, and all of a sudden I have comments on everything. I'm only going to send you the chunks that are new and different, and I'm only going to send those chunks to translation independently. 
There is no desktop publishing process. They are stored individually. They're linked together, so I know I have English, I have French, I have Italian, I have German, I have Spanish. They're linked together, but they're nimble. Now, by the way, I don't have a slide for this. Pavan kept talking about tagging and structure, and if you were here on Tuesday, he said something brilliant. He said, artificial intelligence is the engine and content is the fuel. That, to me, is brilliant. In order for that engine to be able to digest your content, it needs to look like this. If you want it to be effective, if you want Watson and other AI engines to be able to find your brilliance, your content, and bring it up and reuse it and learn more on its own, right? We feed it a certain amount, and then it goes off and finds, it must be structured. And it must be tagged. I have to tag this content, otherwise how can I find it again? Okay. okay? A semantic tag is when you use a word to describe something rather than heading one or page one, paragraph three. You actually call it by what it is. This is uh, overview, or this is uh, specifications or whatever, okay? That's what semantic tagging is, okay? I'm gonna actually pause and say, okay, does anyone have a question about structured authoring? Because I don't wanna like get all the way through and then have you be like, I forgot what you said 20 minutes ago. We have some questions, good, please ask. Ah, the, the question is what kind of technologies are, are out there for authoring in this way? Yeah, obviously you have to use a platform to do this, right? Yeah, how do you do it? It's a very good question. You need to have a platform that allows you to create these kinds of chunks. Well, in the technical world, we have lots of them. Lots and lots of them. They've been working on them for 10 years. You may have heard the word data thrown around, XML authoring thrown around. I'm unfortunately here to tell you that I have not found a really good platform for this in the marketing arena. There's an enormous opportunity, nobody's listening to me, but there's an enormous opportunity. We must find a better platform for marketers. And the reason I say this is that there are lots of tools out there. There's Oxygen, there's Authorit, there's Xmetal, there's Flare, there's lots of different tools that will do this. They are not marketing author friendly right now. So they're out there, but they don't satisfy me. I'm hard to satisfy, I, don't, I am. I, that didn't really help you, did it? <laughs> This would be amazing. There are things coming along. There are certain technologies that are coming along. One of the, I, I know there are a few questions. One of the best things coming along is the fact that Microsoft Word actually has an XML underlying base. Now I'm getting really techo on you, okay? It has an XML underlying base. And finally, there are authoring tool manufacturers that are saying, gee whiz, it would be really cool to be able to use this XML stuff because then I can make structured content. 